So what we're going to do is we're going to go through an example execution without the benefit of a picture just to make sure that we understand formally what's going on as far as circuit execution goes with our formal representation. So here we have a circuit described using this, this graph-like model where we have our set of vertices, we have our set of edges, and then we have two inputs, two input bits, one output bit, and then we have five gates total. We have given these gates names, x0, x1 for the two inputs, and then g0 through g4 through for the five gates. And then we have a, a bunch of edges here. We have a collection of edges. So here we have nine edges. And then we have the labels for each of the gates. So you can see we have two inputs, two nots, two ands, and one or. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and work on executing this circuit in the case where we have our input as being 0, 1. So to work through this, we have these two functions that are sort of the bread and butter for how execution works. We have this w function that tells us the value that an edge is carrying, and we have this val function that tells us what a gate is outputting. So the way that this works is we start out with our input gates, that is x0 and x1, are, are preloaded with our input bits. So our bits were our input bit string was going to be 0, 1. So x0 is preloaded with 0, and x1 is preloaded with 1. And then what we do is we say, let's try to find every single edge where the source of that edge had its value already defined. So since x0 and x1 are the only ones that are defined, every single wire or every single edge that we have that starts with x0 or x1, we know what value that wire is carrying. So this first one, x0 to g0, that is carrying a 1. Sorry, that is carrying a 0 because x0 was set to 0. x1 is set to a 1, so this wire is going to be carrying a 1, x0 is carrying a 0, x1 is carrying a 1, and now those are the only edges whose values we have computed so far. The next thing we can do is we can say, all right, well, are there any gates who are currently undefined where um, all of that gate's inputs are defined. So what we're going to do is look at the right-hand side of all of these wires, and we can see G0. There's only one input to G0, and that's the one that came from this X0. So that means the input to G0 is 0. So we, we know all the inputs for G0. There's just the one, and it's just G0. So now what we need to do is look up what operation we should do with that one input. So we're going to look up the label of G0, which in this case is not. So we're going to do not 0, giving us 1 as the value for G0. And now we can go back to our W table, and every place we saw a G0 as the first thing, we're going to be able to update that value. So uh, G0 is a 1, so this edge is carrying a 1 now, and that is the only place where we see G0. Okay, so now let's see if we can find any more gates values. So looking on the right-hand side, G1 is only receiving one input, and that's a 1. So let's look up the label for G1. That's not. So we're going to do not 1, giving us a 0. And now we can update our W function so that everything... Um, so that everything that started with G1 is now known. So this edge started with G1, so that becomes 0, and that's it. So is there anything else where we know all of the inputs? There are two G2s here. Those are the only two, and we know both of them. Okay, so we know all the inputs for G2. There's two inputs to G2. Both of those are 1. So let's look up the label for G2. That is AND, so we're going to do 1 AND 1. So G2's value is 1. So now every edge that started with G2, we've discovered its value, so we can update that. So G2 to 4, that now has 1, and that is it. 
So let's see, can we compute the value for G3? So G3 has one input here and one input here. So G3 has two inputs and both of them are known. They are zero and zero. So G3 were, is, has the label of and, so we're doing zero and zero, which gives us zero in this case. So now everything that starts with, every edge that starts with a zero is known, so we can change that. And then finally, we have G4, oops, sorry for that typo, G4 here. Okay, so we have G4. G4 has input from G2. So it has this, this wire carrying a one as its input, it has this wire carrying a zero that's input. So G4 has two inputs, zero and one. Let's look up the label for G4, that is an or. So we're doing an or with zero or one, which gives us one. And now this last edge that's coming from G4, we know its value, that's one. So now what we've done is we have identified the value for every single edge in our circuit. So we should be able to figure out what our input is going to be. We have one input bit, so we're gonna look for the Y0 as the destination of our wire, which is this one here. And the value of that wire is going to be our one output bit. So in this case, our output bit is one. So now let's try to figure out what our mystery function actually is. So we're gonna take our representation and try to draw the picture that corresponds with that representation. So to start with, we know that there are going to be two inputs, and we called those x0 and x1, so let's go ahead and draw those, x0, x1. We also know there's going to be one output. We called that y0, so let's go ahead and write that one, so we have y0. And now we have all of our gates. We have two not gates that we're going to need to use. We have two AND gates that we're going to need to use, and then we have one OR gate that we're going to need to use. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our edges in order to figure out exactly how those ought to connect with one another. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is look at our edges. We see that X0, so the input bit 0, that connects with G0, the 0th input of G0. So let's look up the label of G0, that's a NOT gate. So that tells us that x0 is going to connect to this NOT gate. The next thing we have is x1 connects with g1, and g1's label is NOT, so x1 is also going to connect with a NOT gate. After this, we see that x0 also connects to g3, and g3 is going to be an AND gate. So here we have our G3. Let me go ahead and label these. So this is G0, G1, G3. X0 connects to G3, and it's the zeroth input for G3. So there we go. And then X1 connects to G2, and that is the zero the zeroth input of G2. So let's connect X1 to the zeroth input for G2. And then we have G1 is gonna to connect to G3, where G3 is that AND gate. So G1 now goes to the, the first input, the index one input for G3. So there's G1 going to G3. And then we have uh, G3 going to G4, so G3 G3's output is now the the input for G4. So this one's G4. And then we have G2 is also going to G4. So there G2 is the zeroth input for G4. And then we have G4 goes to Y0. And I left one out. I left out a connection to G2. Yeah, there we go. G0 connects to, to G2. So there is G0 going to G2. And now this is our circuit. And hopefully you can see from this circuit that 
Um, this is actually the XOR function. Because we can see that the result is the OR of these two ANDs results, and the ANDs are saying I want x0 and not x1, or I want x1 and not x0.